Good evening, and welcome to this week in review. Tonight's stories include the school update, Calder Elf Care Center dessert party, interview with Dr. Carol Aris. On Wednesday of this week, we visited the school site. Work on the new school is moving along quite well. We spoke to site manager Jim Payne, and he told us that weather has not been too much of a bother and work is pretty much on schedule. The roof of the gym is completed and the floor is being prepared for the cement. The gym floor is expected to be completed within the next few weeks. Workers are busy sheeting up the sides of the building with plywood and working on the roof. Others were busy bringing gravel to level up the gym floor. Mr. Payne told us that all the floors of the new school will be cement. More work has to be done on the school road as well. Mr. Payne is expecting that the school will be weather tight by the time the Christmas break comes around. He also stated that the siding will not be put on until spring. After Christmas, work will begin on the inside of the school. On Wednesday of this week, the Calder Elf Care Center hosted their annual dessert party. Viv Titford, Director with Volunteer Resources, welcomed everyone on behalf of the Western Health Care Corporation. I would like to thank you all for coming out tonight. As you all know, the reason why we're having this is to uh, stack our gift shop. <coughs> I had a meeting with our volunteers at the gift shop today, and I have to uh, tell them what a wonderful job that they've done. I've already told them that. And I think that uh, you're to be admired for your hard work and dedication for the residents of Calder Health Care Center. So I'd like for everyone to give each other a round of applause for all your hard work. And to say on behalf of Western Healthcare Corporation, it's people like you that make us realize um, how strong communities are and how strong volunteerism is in the communities. I guess you all know Jenny. I think you all met her the last time. And for those of you who I haven't met, I'm Bev Tepford and I'm the Director of Volunteer Resources. And it's events like this that make my job unbelievable. People say to me, what's the best thing about your job? It must be really difficult because you're trying to get people to give uh, that don't get paid for it. And I said, well, the best thing about my job is that these people come and give from their heart. And all of you have proven that. You can look over at the table here and see we've got a tremendous amount of stuff from the community. This will all go to the gift shop. At our meeting today, the ladies informed me that we have <coughs> Over $4,000 in our bank account. Ooh, wow. wow. Hey. <laughs> and when you think about it, the gift shop's open 2 to 4, Monday to Friday. That's right. Yeah. These are a group of people who come in. There's, what, 20 of you? About that? Really? Yeah. 25, maybe? Right. Approximately. Yes. That come in every day and sit in the gift shop for two hours and sell things, make things for the gift shop, and continue to give from their heart as well. Um, I'd like to thank Diane and Gloria. Diane, again, has outdone herself. All of us will go away five pounds heavier, <laughs> as usual. Diane, thank you. Uh, Diane and I talked on the phone the other day, and we mentioned something. Today was Diane's day off, and Diane switched her days to be here tonight. So, Diane, thanks. You're the best. Lori couldn't be here tonight. She was in Cornerbrook all day, and she was late getting home, but she would like to pass on her thanks and appreciation for all that you've done. <coughs> One of the things that we talked about at our meeting today, and uh, just for those of you who are not on the committee, what we try to do is give back to Calder. We try to bring something here that's going to benefit the residents, patients, and the area. And one of the things we talked about was how are we going to spend this money? We want to get rid of this money. We've made it, now let's get rid of it. And I spoke with Lori tonight, and one of the suggestions that came up today was that we're hoping to have a palliative care room here. Well, that palliative care room now will become a reality because of all the support and hard work of the people. And it's been decided that the money will go towards that room. And with the money that you have raised, that should pretty well do the room up. So for those of you who don't know what a palliative care room, it's for people at the end of life. Uh, some people come in for pain management and so on. And it's an area that families can go to, and it's an area that's kind of like a home-like setting, that we would probably have a TV there, a microwave, and that sort of thing. For those of you who've had anybody who's uh, been in the hospital at end of life, know that sometimes it's really difficult if there's five or six people in the family, you just kind of want to be around that person who is dying at the end of life. And uh, this room will allow you to do that. This room will give you some <coughs> privacy. And, um, and it will give the person who is in palliative care 
the privacy of being <coughs> in a room and some dignity around them rather than just being a hospital room as such. So thank you again. Uh, please get off and help yourself. Joy, I'm really glad that you joined us tonight. And to the staff, I, I always say what the volunteers have with there. The staff as well, the staff is phenomenal here. They support us, they come out, they uh, bring gifts for the gift shop. They buy things from the gift shop. I think they look forward to the things that are in there as much as uh, the people in the community. So again, I thank you. I look forward to spending some time with you. Please get up and have some punch tea and coffee and some non-fattening desserts. For those of you who are diabetics, there is a tray Diane did up with some cheese, crackers, and some grapes. So please get up and help yourself. Kitchen staff prepared a wide variety of desserts and snacks. With the tables decorated in such an appealing way, the food looked twice as inviting. Some of the desserts included cookies, cakes, tarts, fruit trays, cheese and crackers, and the ever-popular delicious carrot cake. Most of the organizations around town were represented. There were also visitors from Ramya and Francois. As Biv Titford stated in her welcoming remarks, the purpose of the dessert party was to get donations for the gift shop. As you can see, lots of items were donated. Some included tissues, shampoo, home decorations, knitted items, and bath products. All funds raised at the gift shop stays at the Calder Health Care Center to buy items needed for the hospital. Our health tip for October states, increase your vitality with vegetables. Eating five to 10 servings of vegetables and fruits helps reduce the risk of heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and several cancers. Vegetables and fruit are rich in vitamins, minerals, fiber, and contain physiochemicals which help prevent diseases and enhance well-being. Eat a wide variety of brightly colored vegetables daily. Eat dark green, orange, and red vegetables such as spinach, carrots, and red peppers. Include broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage, onions, and garlic. Snack on raw vegetables and low-fat dips. Add pepper, cucumbers, tomatoes, and sprouts to your sandwich. Increase your energy and vitality by adding supplements when making shakes and smoothies. Stay tuned for more of This Week in Review coming up after this. It's the only planet known to sustain life. The only one whose atmosphere has been regulated by nature to create the perfect balance. But today the Earth is warming and nature is not doing it. Fortunately, all of us know someone who has the power to do something. On Thursday of this week, we had an interview with Dr. Carol Aris, professor with the University of Victoria, British Columbia. In our studio, we have Dr. Carol Aris. Welcome to our studio. Thank you. It's a joy to be here. I think this is the first time that we, you've actually sat in the uh, interview chair. It is. I've looked in here many times. <laughs> okay. Now, you, um, you're doing some uh, research in this area. Would you care to tell us a little bit about that? Well, yes, Marie. You know, I've been in this area for a few years, and uh, my present project has really grown from earlier projects, and uh, really the amazing initiative of, of you people with the BBS and uh, the new technology. So um, once I knew that that was being supported uh, by, by agencies in, in the Maritimes and federally, then I applied for funding from SHRC, that Social Sciences and Humanities uh, Council. And um, I, I applied for funding for a rather large team to do what we call a participatory evaluation of new technologies. So that would be the technologies of video conferencing, of um, high-speed internet, um, and it can be older technologies as well. Just looking at technologies in coastal communities, how they are now being used by the people, and, uh, and how they can be used in future. 
Okay. Now, funding came from, I believe you already said that. That's right. So it's, it's um, from a federal source, um, a highly competitive uh, organization that funds academic things, and uh, um, it really was a voice of confidence for the kind of research that we're trying to place in coastal communities. Okay, so now what, what's the purpose of this? Well, the purpose is um, to, uh, we need to know how new technologies are working. I mean, how we're putting a lot of money in technologies. Are they actually benefiting the people? If so, how? Um, if there are problems, how, and there always are with anything that's new, um, how can we work at these problems to, uh, to make it, it work more effectively? And uh, um, just what do the people want? That's a big interest of ours, um, that the technologies be used for the purposes that the people themselves want. We call it participatory. So we call on the people of the five communities. It's in five communities. Same communities that the BBS is dealing with. Um, Grand Brit, Burgio, Ramia, Grey River, and Francois. Okay. Now, um, who, uh, who's involved in this? Like, Well, um, as I say, it's, it's a large team. I'll just name some to give you an idea. It was very important from my perspective that we have Newfoundlanders involved. You see, I'm, I'm from Newfoundland now, but I teach at the University of Victoria. Um, so my co-researcher is a community worker, Darlene Clover, uh, Dr. Darlene Clover, and, and uh, she has great experience with adults. Uh, she's an adult educator. Uh, and then we have Brenda Grisettic, who's uh, at Memorial University, and she's a Newfoundlander. Uh, so we're thrilled to have her with us. She's had a lot of experience with women in the, fi in the fishery. And Lorraine Sheehan, is, um, is the director of the Women's Center in Stephenville, and uh, she comes along to organize workshops in the various places. Um, Fred Campbell, you know Fred well, he's worked with uh, Communities for Survival. He'll come in on the third year uh, to do a video uh, uh, evaluation, just speaking with the people. Okay. So, uh, and then we have advisors and we have partners. So in advisors, we have Dr. Barbara Barter of the uh, Cormac uh, Trail School Board. Uh, we have Beverly Kirby from Stephenville uh, with her community education network. Um, we, then we have a, a dean of education from University of Victoria. And we have a woman called uh, Dr. Linda Kupal, who um, has a great deal of experience with gender and technology, how males uh, boys in schools uh, specifically, and how girls in schools interact with technologies. Well, there's a lot mm -hmm. of people involved. Mm -hmm. Now, what will this do for the communities that you name? Well, we're looking at three aspects. We're looking at health care. So, of course, we have uh, the Western Board uh, is, is a partner in community services. Uh, we're looking at education, therefore the Cormac Trail School Board. And we're looking at businesses. And um, already, there, there are two types of, of benefits, I think, to the communities. Um, the first would be the little things, the little glitches, things that aren't working all that well. And that because we're connected with so many uh, networks um, that we can phone um, and, and uh, write and speak and uh, help these uh, help settle some of the, the little problems. Um, then there are the larger ones, um, getting the word out to the outside world about what these communities have to offer. Because technology is just as good as the uses to which it's put. And I think immediately of the women up and down, up the coast, um, who are doing fantastic work, uh, not just women, but men too, in arts and crafts uh, from birch broom making to quilt making. And at the moment, um, this isn't being used um, to, to for their own financial advantage. It's usually just a community effort or family. And it would be lovely if the women could, could reap 
uh, the rewards from the work of the women and the men of this work that they're doing. There, that's just one. There are so many examples of things that would be of tremendous value to people outside. And, uh, and the outsiders don't really know all that much about it. Or they don't know about community life as well. So they don't know what it's like to teach two children, for example, in Grand Brit. They think this is a cushy job. It's not, believe me. And it's up to me to bring that story to the outside world. Okay. Now, how long will your project last? Three years. So <coughs> approximately the same length as the uh, funding for the BBS uh, ICT, and that's uh, Information Communication Technologies. Um, so about that same amount, and we're only into the first half of our first year. But already we've given workshops in, in three smaller communities, and uh, we hope to have two more in November. And, uh, and I hope we'll be able to use this tape again and, uh, and inform the people uh, through that. Um, now, are, do you have any uh, long-range plans for your uh, project or the information that you gather from your project? Yes, um, we do. Uh, in the second year and the third year, uh, particularly, we'll be doing a lot of writing. And, and writing isn't just academic writing, although there will be that, but it's also um, getting in touch with the popular press, for example, um, and, and education journals, and business journals, and um, health journals. So really using our expertise, and I, I suppose that is our expertise, um, in the writing and, and speaking. So um, we'll be doing a great deal of that, both academically and in the popular press, papers and so on. Now, you, you did mention that um, uh, Lorraine Sheenan will be doing some workshops. Yes. Now, what type of uh, workshops will, will she be offering? Well, she's done three of them already, but with, with us. So she'll always be doing it in cooperation with team members. And it's to introduce the team in a fun way. Lorraine knows this coast quite well and the people. And um, really, we, we um, have mixers at the beginning. And we, there's the, the purpose of the workshop is to inform each community of our purposes um, and also to gain, for us, to gain information about the community. And we ask the people who are there at the workshop to do personal interviews with us because we need those one-to-one -one interviews. And also to identify other people in the community who would be um, the best spokespeople for their community. So that's the purpose okay. of her workshops. Then later, we, we must report back to the people. So the major partner in this whole thing are the major partners are the people in the communities. Okay. okay. Now, is there anything else you'd like to add? Did we? Not really, except that it's wonderful to be back here again on the southwest coast. and. Um, and I guess I'd better say my, my personal reason for um, getting involved in this is that I am a member of a huge bi-coastal uh, research team looking at coastal communities and the health of coastal communities. And in Newfoundland, it only went as far south as Stephenville, stretched a little down toward uh, Porta Basque. And my immediate reaction was, well, why not swing around the corner and include these uh, so west uh, communities that are so often not part of the loop? They need to be because we have so much to offer. Well, we certainly thank you for joining us this morning and uh, drop by any time. Well, it's been a real pleasure. <laughs> Being a volunteer firefighter offers one reward few other jobs can match. Few jobs offer you the opportunity to save a life, but as a volunteer firefighter, you could be called upon to do it at a moment's notice, and you'll need more than the right shoe size to fill bo these boots. It takes a special person to fill the boots of a volunteer firefighter. The Burgio Volunteer Fire Department needs people, male or female, with a strong desire to help others, people with courage, dedication, and enthusiasm. Someone who isn't afraid of hard work, 
who is willing to accept the challenge of a difficult job as a willingness to learn new skills, someone who considers respect and appreciation reward enough, and someone who is just glad to help. Because a volunteer firefighter is such an important job, volunteers are expertly trained and properly equipped. If you believe you are this kind of person and you are 19 years of age or older, you are needed as a volunteer firefighter. Contact Glen Ann at 886-2974 for an application or for more information. You may receive the best reward any job can give. Stay tuned for more of this week in review coming up after this. What if your family lived in a home on an island you couldn't leave? With limited amounts of food and safe drinking water. It would be very important to make things last, wouldn't it? Especially if your family kept growing and growing and growing. Well, it doesn't matter where your home is, because we all live on an island we can't leave. So please, use only what you need, because supplies truly are limited. We can do that. Off the rack. Last week on Off the Rack, we showed you this year's graduation class during their kindergarten graduation. This week, we have class number two. Let's look back to June 1991. BBS Playbill. Tune in on Tuesday for a rebroadcast of Pansy's Garden. Try your luck on Wednesday by playing LOBA TV Bingo. On Thursday, we'll have a rebroadcast of entertainment from the Sand and Sea Festival with music by Route 480. Join Pansy and the gang for two stories, a craft, and lots of fun on Saturday morning at 11 a.m. on Pansy's Garden. And I'll be here again next week with This Week in Review. Please stay tuned now for music from the Sand and Sea Festival with Route 480. For this week in review, I'm Marie Rose. Good night and God bless.